Hello, welcome to Dungeoneers Pack, a channel bringing you player-focused discussions and character guides for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. My name is Josh, thank you for watching. Is your campaign going to have you travel from plane to plane? Or do you need a character that is equipped with dealing with enemies invading the material plane? Then the Oath of the Watcher Paladin may just be what you need. In this video, I'm going to cover the mechanics of the Oath of the Watcher Paladin subclass, give my opinion on them, and give you some ideas on how you can fit this subclass into the official 5th edition settings. With that said, let's get started. When we choose the Oath of the Watcher subclass, we gain access to additional spells. Starting at level 3, we pick up Alarm and Detect. At level 5, we get Moonbeam and Sea Invisibility. At 9th level, we pick up Counterspell and Non-Detection. At level 13, we pick up Aura of Purity and Banishment. And at last, at level 17, we gain Hold Monster and Scrying. The spells really hit on the detection theme of the subclass, and we gain a couple of crowd control options as well. Although we gain access to counterspell later than any full caster, it is still a powerful addition to the paladin's toolkit even if we can only counter lower level spells. This will just allow our full caster teammates to focus on stopping enemy spellcasters from firing off their most powerful spells. The other feature we gain at level 3 is our channel divinity which provides us two abilities to choose from. The first option is Watcher's Will. As an action, we can choose a number of creatures we see within 30 feet of us up to a number equal to our Charisma modifier. For one minute, we and the chosen creatures have advantage on Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma saving throws. The second option is Abjure the Extra Planar. As an action, an Aberration, Celestial, Elemental, Fey, or Fiend within 30 feet of us makes a Wisdom saving throw. If they fail, they are turned for one minute or until they take damage. They must spend their turn to move away as far away from us as they can and they can't willingly end their move in the space within 30 feet of us. They can only use the dash action, use an action to attempt to escape from the effects that prevent them from moving, or if they cannot move, use the dodge action. Watcher's Will is a great channel divinity, and I can see it being our most used option. It will give our party members an increased chance of avoiding some pretty nasty status conditions that can take them out of the fight. Abjure the extra planar feels like it was taken straight out of the cleric's handbook, and that's not a bad thing. While the party cleric will only be turning undead, the Watcher subclass can pretty much turn every other creature type in the game. At level 7, we gain access to this subclass's aura, Aura of the Sentinel. When we, and any creature of our choice within 10 feet of us roll for initiative, we all gain a bonus to our initiative equal to our proficiency bonus. At 18th level, the range of this aura increases to 30 feet. It seems that Wizards has learned their lesson from the Oath of Glory subclass and gave the aura for this subclass the standard 10 feet range with an eventual upgrade to 30 feet. A theme to keep in mind is that when we obtain this feature at level 7, anyone in the range of the aura will be adding plus 3 to their initiative rolls on top of their modifiers. This bonus will continue to grow as we level. When we hit level 15, we will be able to return some damage to enemies trying to bring harm to our allies with the Vigilant Rebuke feature. Whenever we or a creature we can see within 30 feet of us succeeds on an Intelligence, Wisdom, or Charisma saving throw, we can use our reaction to deal 2d8 plus our Charisma modifier worth of force damage to the creature that forced that saving throw. Vigilant Rebuke is a variation of the Hellish Rebuke spell with some differences. The major difference comes down to the trigger for each ability. While Hellish Rebuke will trigger solely on the attacks made to us, Vigilant Rebuke will trigger off multiple targets succeeding on their saving throws. This pairs extremely well with our Watcher's Will ability from our Channel Divinity as we can increase our party success rate so we can sling some damage back at the enemy. The one thing I want to point out is that there is no range limit when it comes to the damage we return back to the enemy. So enemy spellcasters aren't safe in the backline and are further punished when they fail to impose one of their spell effects. When we hit level 20, we receive our final subclass feature, Mortal Bulwark. Mortal Bulwark allows us to become the ultimate weapon against extra planar threats. As a bonus action, we can activate this ability and gain the following benefits for 1 minute. We gain true sight with the range of 120 feet, we have an advantage on attack rolls against aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, and fiends, and when we hit a creature with an attack roll and deal damage to it, we can also force it to make a charisma saving throw against our spell save DC. On a failed save, the creature is magically banished to its native planar of existence if it's currently not there. On a successful save, the creature can't be banished by this feature for 24 hours. Once we use this bonus action, we can't use it again until we finish a long rest unless we expend a 5th level spell slot to use it again. Mortal Bulwark turns every attack we make into a banishment spell. This is further supported by having advantage on every attack we make against extra planar enemies. The banishing attacks don't have to be made with melee weapons and the targets aren't limited to only extra planar threats. We can trigger the effect using ranged attacks or spell attacks and humanoid and undead creatures can be affected by the banishment ability. Before I give my final thoughts on the subclass, let's take a look at how we can fit this subclass into the official 5th edition settings. In Forgotten Realms, we could be a part of the Paladin Order, the Vigilant Eyes of the God. We are sent on a mission by our God Helm to protect Faerun from threats invading the Material Plane. 
In Eberron, this is perfect for an orc that belongs to the Gatekeepers. They could be traveling all throughout Kovair, stopping anyone or any organization, attempting to free the Dalkir or the demonic overlords from their prisons. In Ravnica, there are no guilds that actively hunt extraplanar threats, but the subclass's toolkit fits perfect for a character that belongs to the Azorius Senate. They could be an Azorius arrester with a special assignment investigating and stopping crimes involving non-humanoid threats in the city. And finally, in Theros, this could be a champion of the God of Mystery, Crufix, on a mission to investigate and protect the plane from the unknown. I don't have anything negative to say about the Oath of the Watcher Paladin. The Paladin is already one of the best damage dealing classes in the game, and pairing the class's offensive power with a subclass to boost your group's defenses will have you bring in a well-rounded character to the table. For a player looking for a subclass that increases their damage output, this isn't the subclass for you. While many of this subclass's features are strong, my favorite and what I believe will be the most used will be the Watcher's Will option for the Channel Divinity. This will be your bread and butter defensive option, saving your team from spells and other status effect inducing actions. Overall, the Oath of the Watcher Paladin is a solid option if you're looking to bring a team-oriented character to the table. With that said, I want to hear from you. What do you think of the Oath of the Watcher Paladin? Let me know down in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this, I drop a video every week, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're looking for a well-rounded spellcaster that can guide your team through the darkness, then check out my video on the Twilight Domain Cleric. You can click on the video on the screen to see the new features this subclass can bring to your table and how you can fit it into the official 5th edition settings. Alright, I'm out of here. Have a good one.